Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to English Cafe. This is Mamda with today's vocabulary live session where we learn 10 advanced English words and phrases from daily newspaper headlines. Please join me for the session and let's learn and practice some new advanced English vocabulary from today's world news and yeah, from today's world and business news. So please join me for the session and we will get started. And as you join me, please comment a hi so that I know that you're here attending this session. And uh, there are a few points before we start the session. Point number one, please watch the full session. Stay with me throughout the session and learn these words. Keep in mind that learning a language is, has no shortcuts. Right? There are no shortcuts to have a robust vocabulary. If you need a robust, expansive vocabulary in a language, you need to invest time. So please stay with me throughout the session. Number two, please participate during the session. Write down the comments, write down the answers, ask your questions, be active and engaged during the sessions. Keep your mind open so that you can actually think in English and use these words that you learn. Point number three, please watch the session with your earphones or your headphones on so that you have better audio quality. And point number four, please take notes if possible. Um, if you have a pen and a paper handy, that would be great. Or if you can take notes in your phone or computer, please do that because you would like to go through these words later and you would like to use these words in your conversations and the last point is please share this live session take a moment right now share it with someone share it with a friend or in a group so that some other people can learn some advanced english vocabulary it's a free session it doesn't cost anything so let's help people learn some new words and now we'll get started. I'll see if I have any comments. Let me just check. Oh, yes, I do. Murli is there. Hi, Murli. Welcome to the session. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Venkateshwari says, hi, good evening. Hi, Venkateshwari. Good evening. Thank you for joining. How are you doing today? Basit says, hi. Hi, Basit. Thank you for joining the session. How are you doing? I hope you all are doing great. Do write me a hi if you're there. Do write me a hi and please share this session. Go ahead, hit the share button, share it with someone. We're going to learn some very nice words and phrases today. So let's get started now. The newspaper I have is the Hindu as every day. I use the Hindu and um, today we are learning words from the world and the business pages. Let's talk about the first headline. So here it is, it says, Hong Kong's largest pro-democracy party shuns patriot-only poll. I hope you can see the headline. We're going to discuss words from this headline. So HK stands for Hong Kong. So you know that Hong Kong is, uh, Hong Kong is a Chinese province, I think, right? Are they a country or is Hong Kong a Chinese province? Please let me know, I'm not sure but please tell me. So th this news is about Hong Kong and it's about Hong Kong's largest pro-democracy political party. I would like to discuss with you the word pro as, as a prefix. So let's discuss that. Pro as a prefix means supporting or approving something. For example, this sentence says pro-democracy party. That means the political party that supports democracy, right? And the, the opposite for pro is anti, right? Pro-democracy, anti-democracy. Pro-Taliban, anti-Taliban, right? So pro-Taliban are the people who support Taliban. Anti-Taliban are the people who oppose Taliban. So that's pro. For example, we can say pro-government. So there are people who are pro-government and then there are people who are anti-government. The pro-people, pro-government people support the government, 
approve everything the government does. And then there are these anti-government people who do not like what the government is doing. So anti-government or um, pro-American, anti-American, etc. You can use pro and anti as prefixes to say if you support something or you oppose something. But the word pro also means somebody who is uh, an expert in something, somebody who is a professional. Like if we say uh, she is a pro in communication, that means maybe she is a communication professional. Or if we say that she is a pro in badminton, that means maybe she is a badminton professional. She plays it as a profession and she is an expert at it. So their pro is a word in itself. But if we are using pro before a word as a prefix, that means supporting that idea. So now give me an example where you can use pro and anti as the, the prefixes on the words. How are you going to use them? Please let me know. And I hope you understood how we use pro as a prefix. If you have understood, tell me, yes, I have understood it in the comments. Or tell me, yes, I have got it in the comments. Let me know. Now, see if I have any other comments. Okay, I have one from Omar. Uh, Omar says, Ma'am, kaise translate karenge? Main khana khau. Main khana khau could be, should I eat now? Or can I eat now? Depending on the situation, you can use a word like, can I eat now? Shall I eat now? Should I eat now? May I eat now? You can use any of these expressions to say, Main khana khau in English, Omar, depending on your depending on who you're talking to, okay? Kiran says, good evening, ma'am. Good evening, Kiran, thank you for joining. How are you doing, Kiran? I hope you're good. So that was pro, we just discussed the word pro. Did you understand it? Give me a thumbs up or tell me, yes, I got it, how to use pro. The second word that here you can see is shun. So let's take a look at the headline again. Here it is, it says, Hong Kong's largest pro-democracy party shuns patriot-only poll. So the second word here is shun, S-H-U-N, shun. We learned this word last week, but uh, let's discuss this again. To shun something means to avoid it. To shun somebody or to shun something means to avoid that thing. For example, she shunned me at the party. That means she avoided me at the party. Or you should shun the company of bad, pe negative people maybe. So you should shun the company of negative people means you should avoid the company of negative people. Or um, the leader always shuns questions from media. That means the leader, this particular leader avoids questions from media. So that's the word shun i hope you understood it s-h-u-n shun is a verb so you can use it in all the forms the past form is shunned and the third form is also shun or you can say shuns etc so it's a verb to shun something means to avoid it that's the second word please give me some examples use the word shun in a sentence and i'll see if i have any comments with the previous words we discussed okay great good to know that you've got it alia thank you for letting me know and the next word that we discussed is shun. Did you understand this word? To shun means to avoid. Like shun the company of negative people. That means avoid it. Okay. Give me some examples on how you can use the word shun in the comments. And I would like to say, please participate. If you're here, don't just, um, don't just try to learn. Language is about using. So once you understood a word, once you've understood it, please use it. Try to think of a situation where you will use it in a sentence. Then only you will be able to use it later also when you have to speak real sentences. So please use the word shun in a sentence. Please let me know how you're going to use it in speaking. And the other word here in this headline is patriot. I hope you know this word, but I thought we should still discuss it. A patriot is a person who loves their country and uh, if necessary they can fight for the country right so that person is a patriot can you give me some examples or do you think you are a patriot please let me know give me some examples of someone who's a patriot or who was a patriot please let me know and the other word here is poll you know p-o-l-l -L, poll 
means and uh, you know polls we create polls online a poll is also an election so an election is also called a poll all right so all these words were there in this first headline we learned the prefix pro then shun then patriot then poll i hope all these words are clear to you i would like you to use the word patriot in a sentence and i would also like you to use the word shun in a sentence so please use these words and uh, now let's move on let's talk about the next headline so here it is this news is about vienna vienna is the capital of austria as you know so this headline says i can't read this name it's very difficult it says schallenberg sworn in as austria's leader so you know that austria is a european country and uh, so this is about Austria. In Austria, this person, Mr. Schallenberg, has been sworn in as the leader. Let's discuss the expression to swear somebody in. To swear somebody in means when, uh, when somebody, like so when somebody makes a formal promise to be honest, to do their duty diligently, honestly, etc and a particular uh, what do we call it uh, a particular uh, ceremony is held when they are starting this position like when any political leader um, when any political leader takes charge of the office for the first time then they promise to be honest to do their duties you know in the best possible way diligently etc so that is what we call to swear in or for example in the court people swear in um, and they they uh, they promise to tell the truth so that's what it means by to swear somebody in but it is usually used in passive voice so rather than saying like people of austria swore mr schallenberg in as their leader we say we use a passive sentence and we say that schallenberg was sworn in as austria's leader so that is sworn to swear somebody in swear is a verb so the first form is swear, the second form is swore, and the third form is sworn. Here, what you see is the third form, sworn in. So now, uh, I hope you understood it. Let's discuss it once more. To swear somebody in means to, um, to make somebody officially, formally promise that they will do their job honestly loyally etc so that's to swear somebody in i hope you understood that uh, and when the especially when the politicians are sworn in they um, they go through this uh, particular ceremony where they read a particular script and they say that you know i'll do all my duties diligently i will not disclose anything so that is when they are sworn in i hope you got that Give me some examples of how you can use the expression sworn in in a sentence. Uh, have you ever been to a swearing in ceremony of uh, a leader or an office holder or uh, a minister? Please let me know. I would like to know what's your response in the comments. And now let's move on and let's talk about another headline. So here it is it says, post recovery. Nasheed returns to Malay, Mali. Oh, it's Mali. The post-recovery Nasheed returns to Mali. He was undergoing treatment in Germany for injuries from an assassination bid. So this uh, particular article is about um, Maldives. And Mali is the capital of Maldives. As you can see, so there was this uh, Maldives leader who were undergoing who was undergoing a treatment and after the treatment he has returned to the capital of maldives that is that is mali and the headline further says that there was an assassination attempt there was an assassination bid so let's talk about the word assassination what does it mean have you heard the word assassination before please let me know 
if you know this. So assassinate is a verb and assassination is a noun. And uh, assassination means the murder of someone popular, the murder of someone famous or important. So that is what assassination is. Otherwise, we use the words murder, kill, etc. Like somebody was killed or somebody was murdered. But if an important person is murdered, if a famous person is murdered, we call it an assassination. And the killing of a famous person, like to kill a famous person, is to assassinate that person. For example, Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated by Nathuram Godse in 1948. So that's how we can use the word assassinate. Or death, to say death, we use the word assassination. All right. So that's the words assassinate and assassination. Please let me know how you're going to use these two words. Like they say assassination attempt. That means somebody tried to kill him. Please let me know how you're going to use the word assassinate or assassination in a sentence. Please remember that assassinate is a verb and assassination is a noun. So use them accordingly. So this was the next word assassination. Now let's move on and let's talk about more headlines. Oh, and I haven't read the comments. I'll see if I have any unread comments. Okay, Tashu says, I always shun the negative thoughts and things. Great example. Okay. Uh, Ecomac India says, good evening. Good evening, Ecomac India. How are you? Murli says, honesty is the best policy. That's right. That's right, Murli. So assassination. Let me know how you're going to use the word assassination in a sentence. Please let me know. Uh, Rajiv Gandhi's assassination in crowd, nobody knew till now. Yeah, nobody knows who assassinated him. Okay. Maurice says, Indira Gandhi assassinated with her own security. Yeah, she was assassinated by her own security personnel. Okay. By her own security personnel, Monopoly. That's what you should say. Great. Yes, that's how we use the word assassination. Now, let's move on and talk about another headline, which is a very nice, uh, which is a great news for our economy, actually. It's from Business News. So take a look at this. It says, ebbing COVID wave, pace of jab, aiding economic recovery. Let's discuss this. So this statement has come from the finance ministry. So our finance ministry has told us, has informed that the co since the COVID wave is now ebbing, let's discuss the word ebb, E double B, first of all. So you know that around uh, April or May this year, we had a second wave of COVID in India, which was so devastating and deadly. And uh, that I think had a great negative impact on our economy, as well as the lockdowns that happened last year. But now, since the COVID wave is ebbing, let's discuss the word ebb, E double B, ebb. So ebb is primarily used to talk about sea waves, to talk about ocean waves. So if we say that the sea ebbs, or if we say that the wave ebb, that means they move away from the coast. When there is a tide, you understand, like when there's a tide situation in a sea, all the water comes towards the shore, right? But later, when all the water goes away, when it decreases, when it moves away from the shore, that's when we say that the sea is ebbing or the tide is ebbing, okay? So that's ebb, but here, we are not talking about a sea, we are not talking about tide. Here, the word ebb means to become less strong or to disappear. That's what it means. So this particular word here means to become less strong or disappear. And as we say that COVID wave is now ebbing, that means COVID is becoming less stronger. That's right, right? Now, the disease is not very severe or not very serious like it was because so many people are getting vaccination. And that's what the next sentence is about, next uh, uh, few words are about. 
So ebb, ebb means to become less strong, to disappear, etc. So the COVID wave is ebbing and the pace of jabs. Let's talk about the words pace and jab. Pace, P-A-C-E, I'm sure you're familiar with this word. Pace means speed of something, right? The pace of jabs, J-A-B, jab. To jab somebody means to hit them, but jab also refers to an injection. A jab is also an injection. So here, pace of jabs means the speed of vaccination because the vaccine is given through injections, right? So we are using the word jab to talk about vaccines. So according to the finance ministry, the COVID wave is ebbing now. It's getting, it's becoming less strong. It's kind of disappearing now. And the speed of vaccination, the pace of jab, that means this, as we know that the speed of the vaccination in the country is now increasing. And they say that it is aiding economic recovery. Now let's discuss the word aid, A-I-D. Aid is a verb, so it's used with its I-N-G form, we're saying aiding. To aid means to help or to support, okay? So as the COVID wave is becoming less stronger and the speed of vaccination is increasing, that is supporting or that is helping economic recovery. That's what this headline is about. So I hope you understood the headline and I hope you understood these words. To ebb means to become less strong or to disappear. Pace means speed. Jab means injection. Aid means help or support. So there were these four words in this headline. I hope you understood these words. Can you use the expression ebb? Because I think ebb could be a new expression for you. For example, um, for example, um, after not working for five years, my confidence ebbed. That means my confidence decreased. I became less confident, right? Or uh, we can say that, uh, uh, we can say that as I got talking to him and I, as I got more familiar with him, my hesitation ebbed. My hesitation ebbed means my hesitation became less stronger. That means I became more comfortable. Please try to use the word ebb in a sentence. Ebb is a verb. E double B, it's a verb. You can use it in all the forms. Ebb, ebbed, ebbing, etc. Please use it. And I'll see if I have any unread comments. Okay, I think I have one from Renat. Yes, Renat says, world leaders are always in danger of assassination. That's right. Murli says, Lal Bahadur Shastri, was assassinated in Tashkent. Tashkent, please, please correct the spelling. Renu says, hi, sorry, I'm late. Hi, Renu, glad that you are here. I hope you are doing good. Murli says, aiding people on COVID time, okay? Ecomac India says, young generation health ebbing to handle disease, great example. Renu says, doctor gave him a remdesivir jab. Great one, yeah. Raman says hi. Hi, Raman. Thank you for joining. How are you? Hi, Imam. Thank you for joining the session. I hope you're doing well. Good to have you guys here. So we just discussed the word ebb, pace, jab, aid, these words. And we have three more very interesting words. So here, let's read this headline. It's the same, uh, it's the same headline which further says, agri-growth, rebound in manufacturing, Buoyant revenues augur well, says finance ministry. Finman is finance ministry. So this statement again has come from finance ministry. They say that the agricultural sector is growing. Agri stands for agriculture. So the agriculture sector is growing and there is rebound in manufacturing. Let's discuss the word rebound. The basic meaning of the word rebound is when you hit something on a hard surface and it comes back. So that's a rebound. For example, when you hit a ball against the wall. Yeah, I'm a left-handed, so I use my left hand <laughs> to throw a ball. So when you, when you hit a ball on the wall, it comes back. That's a rebound. 
or you hit it on the floor and it comes back up, that's a rebound. So as you can understand, a rebound is, you know, you send something, it comes back to you. It's like return. That's rebound. But rebound also means to return to an earlier position, to return to an earlier uh, and better condition. So that's rebound. So if we say that there is rebound in manufacturing, that means the level of manufacturing in our country is coming back to the pre-COVID period. It is returning to the same uh, level as it used to be before COVID. So I hope you understood the word rebound. Rebound, first and primary meaning is when you hit something on a hard surface, it come back, comes back, that's a rebound. Rebound also means when something comes back to its previous position and it's in fact in a better condition. That's rebound in a normal uh, way. Rebound is also return. You can use the just you can also understand that a rebound is return of something. So that's rebound. So finance ministry says that there is rebound in manufacturing because manufacturing is also improving now. And there are buoyant revenues. Let's discuss the word buoyant. Take a look at this word. Buoyant means happy and confident. But here we are talking about revenues. We are talking about economy and revenues and economy are not people, right? So people can be happy and confident. But if we talk about buoyant economy or buoyant revenues, that means they are satisfactorily positive, right? So if the economy is buoyant, that means it's a positive economy. It's a satisfactorily positive economy. So buoyant means happy and confident. But if we are using the word buoyant for revenues, for economy, that means we are satisfied with what is happening in the economy. We are happy with what's happening in the economy. So that's buoyant. All right. So I hope you learned the word. I would like you to use the words rebound and buoyant in the sentences. Please use the word buoyant in a sentence. I will move on and I'll talk about another word that's there. So they say that agricultural growth, improve in manufacturing and uh, positive revenues, they all augur well for the economy. Let's discuss the word augur, A-U-G-U-R, augur, that's the word. So augur is a verb again, to augur means to be a sign of especially good or bad things in the future. So if something is a sign of something good or something bad in the future, it augurs that thing. For example, all these things that are happening in our country right now, augur, augur, a, um, augur economic growth. That means all these things are a sign of economic growth in the future. All right. Or for example, um, if we say, think about a day-to-day -day life and we say, um, uh, her, her behavior over the last week augurs something fishy, for example. That means her behavior over the last one week is a sign that something fishy is going on. So augur means to be a sign of something. I hope you understood this expression, like I used it. I said her behavior augurs that something is fishy, which says that her behavior is a sign that something is fishy. Please let me know how you're going to use the word auger since it's a verb. Use it in all the forms. Auger, augurs, augured, etc. Please use it. I'll see if I have any unread comments. Okay. Uh, Murli says, while communication with international delegates, my confidence ebbs. E double B. Great uh, example, Murli. Please 
correct the spelling. All right, so it is E double B, Eb. Okay, Venkateshwari says, uh, I'm sorry, who is this person? Jishu Krishna, what is that? Sorry, was assassinated by four people. I'm sorry, I can't read that word. What's that, Venkateshwari? Renu says, the pace of our business growth is satisfactory. Okay, great. Ecomax says, now teenager ebbed in real life. That's why they get demotivated in short time. All right. Um, Gulam, hi, Gulam. Good evening and thank you for joining the session. Peanut says, watching TV is ebbed due to rolling out of smartphones. Yes, that's right. Ecomac India says, whatever you give in your product, your customers rebound for a long time. Wonderful example. Murli says, currently Indian economy is buoyant. Yes, great example of the word buoyant. Renu says, his family's financial condition rebounded after two years of his father's death. Very nice example. Guys, please read Renu's example. That's such an appropriate example of the word rebound. Okay, Ecomac India sells who sleep more, it augured to depression or made there are afraid of many uncertain things. Okay, so you can say uh, if you oversleep, it augurs depression. Please correct the sentence say if somebody oversleeps, it augurs depression. That means it is a sign of depression. So augurs means is a sign of or augured will be was a sign of, etc. So please use it. Let me know how you're going to use it. So this was the word auger. I hope you understood it. I would like more people to use the word auger in a sentence. Auger is a verb. Use it in all different tenses. All right. And I guess these were the words I had to discuss with you today. Let's quickly review all the words that we learned. So the first word was pro, P-R-O, pro. Pro as a prefix, actually. If pro is not a prefix, if it is a word on its own, that means a professional in something. Somebody who is an expert in something, that's a pro. Like somebody who does something at a, you know, with great efficiency, etc. So that person is a pro. But if we're using pro as a prefix, like pro-government, pro-American, pro-democracy, pro-Taliban, pro-Modi, that means you support that thing. So pro something means you support that thing or you approve that thing. And the opposite for pro is anti, as you know, right? Anti-government, anti-national, anti-terrorism, terrorist, you know this? Anti-terrorism, etc. So pro and anti can be used as the prefixes. The next word was shun, S-H-U-N, shun. To shun something means to avoid it. Avoid. Shun means avoid. It's a word. Next one is patriot. If somebody is a patriot, they love their country. And if necessary, they can fight for that country. So that's somebody who is a patriot. Next one was... Um, to swear somebody in, to swear somebody in is means uh, to um, to make them take an official promise to be honest, to be loyal, etc. Uh, and usually these promises are uh, made in a court of law or when somebody is starting a new job, like when a new minister is starting, when a minister is starting a new job, they are sworn in. So that is to swear somebody in. But it is usually used in passive. So we say that sworn in. He was sworn in as the prime minister. He was sworn in as the minister of uh, roads and transport, etc. So that is, um, and I'm using the word he because these people are mostly men. Now, the next one. Next word was assassination. Assassination is killing of somebody who is famous or important. And to assassinate means to kill somebody who is famous or important. The next word that we had was eb, e double b eb. So eb, if the c ebbs, 
that means it uh, it moves far far from the shore it moves away but if anything else ebbs that means it becomes less strong or it disappears ebb next one was pace p a c e pace pace means speed of something speed next one was jab j a b jab a jab is an injection we also have an expression that says to take a jab at somebody to take a jab at somebody means to criticize that person so you can maybe write down this as well if you don't know this to take a jab at someone means to criticize that person for example she uh, she took a jab at me for uh, uh, for not sending her gifts on her birthday that means she criticized me so you got it next one is uh, aid a i d aid to aid means to help or support next one was rebound so rebound means to return to an earlier and better condition but the basic meaning of rebound is to bounce back after hitting a hard surface to improve also to rebound means to improve so that's rebound next one was buoyant buoyant means happy and confident and positive etc so that's buoyant and the last word that we discussed was augur to augur means to be a sign of something good or something bad in future okay for example uh, for example the huge deployment of uh, um army from china at indo china border augurs war from the chinese so augurs war means it is a sign of a war so that's the word augur these were the words that we learned today i hope you understood the words that we discussed in case there is any particular word that you didn't understand or you can't figure out how to use it you can write it down in the comments and we can discuss it and let me see if i have any unread comments oh i think i do rena says watching tv is oh i had read that okay um all right renu says oh i had read that one as well all right Okay, Renu says I couldn't understand auger. Okay, let's discuss that. So auger is a verb. Replace it with is a sign of. Is a sign of. Okay, for example, a uh, huge military deployment by China on the border augurs war. Okay, that means huge military deployment by China is a sign of. war so auger is equal to is a sign of i hope you understood that let's think of some other example for example um, all these great things happening in the indian business environment auger a positive economy auger a positive economy like in this particular um, headline that means all the developments are a sign of a positive economy so to augur means to be a sign of something good or something bad in future renu did you understand it please let me know muli says need more clarification on augur also oh, i just discussed it okay venkateshwari says her behavior is like um oh okay so you can say that her health condition augurs covid that means her health condition is a sign of covid 19 Okay. Um, Renu says he is pro Gandhian thought. Great one. Yes, that's how we can use the word pro. All right. Moving on to the next one. Murli says I shunned NCB drug case news over the television. Oh, okay. Got it. All right. Murli says he is a pro Islamist. Okay. financial i financial rebounded last two months over the covid time okay you can say my financial condition rebounded 
All right, Morley, that's what you should say. My financial condition rebounded. I just discussed the word auger with you. Rahman says economic growth increase is a, uh, a finance and to, I'm sorry, I can't understand that uh, sentence, Rahman. Please, please clarify it. Okay, Renu, did you get it? Um, let me try to think of more examples with the word auger. So for example, um, she never comes on time. It augurs that she is not interested in this job. I just said this sentence. I hope you are listening carefully. I'll repeat it. She never comes on time. It augurs that she is not interested in this job. That means it is a sign of the fact that she is not interested in the job. So auger means some is a sign of or to be a sign of something good or something bad in future. So I hope I have made that clear. And these were the words I wanted to discuss with you. Now, please tell me how you found today's session. Did you learn any new words? Type in the new words that you learned today. Any new words or expressions? If they were new to you, let me know in the comments. And if you have any other questions, please put your questions in the comments. And uh, if you joined us for the first time today, let me tell you that at English Cafe, we offer online spoken English courses to help you practice speaking every day so that you can develop confidence and develop fluency while speaking in English. So if that's something you're looking for, please uh, get in touch with us. Join an online course and start practicing so that you can build more confidence and fluency while speaking. And for this live session, we conduct it every day at 4 p.m. Indian time. So please join us daily for this live session. And that's all from me for today's session. Do leave any of your questions or comments or suggestions or feedback in the comment section. We'll go through it and we'll respond to you. And I'll see you with another session. And there's one more thing. This Friday, we will have a test. We have decided to have quizzes every Friday. So we'll discuss vocabulary from Monday through Thursday. And on Friday, we will have a quiz. So please um, keep taking notes, keep reviewing these words, and participate in the quiz on, on Friday. That's all for today. Let's meet tomorrow at 4. Bye and take care.